Hello my lovely fellow crafters. It's Terry from Vig's Tez Creates and thanks for stopping by today. I hope you enjoy your visit. What do I have here? I have three creations using the brand new Terrific Triple Towers die set. So this die set enables you to make a Helter Skelter, a windmill, and also a lighthouse and what I have made as well is a fairy house because well why not and also as always with 3d makes you can use them to make cards so what will follow is I'm going to give you a quick look at the dies in the kit and then there'll be a full tutorial for how to construct the Helter Skelter and lots of top tips around constructing the other makes and then I will explain how I've made this little beauty which just in case you can't see has a flickering tea light in and as there's vellum in these windows when it's dark this is going to look absolutely stunning and a pretty blingy birthday card. So let's dive into having a brief look at the contents of this kit. So here we go. From the packaging, you can see that there are three examples of the three different makes that this kit is designed to create. And as you can see, Although it looks like one complete element, you can actually remove the top element and then put little goodies inside. And it's quite tall actually. It's completed. It is, it's about seven inches tall, I would say. Something like that, seven, seven and a half inches. And it's just fantastic. There are so many elements in this kit. So when we turn over, there are really clear instructions for how to create all three of the makes. And essentially the body of the make, the actual construction of it is the same for all three. The differences are obviously in the decoration whether there's brickwork or windows or panels and then there are three different lids or tops these two assemble in exactly the same way that one is slightly different so you've got all the construction elements in here but then there are also lots of little extras as well so we've got some foliage, some florals, we've got brickwork, different options for the windows. So the Helter Skelter and the windmill both use this as the sort of top deck. So you've got a round window and a triangular window. There are a number of different doors You've got one here, which has got an element that cuts out little four little windows there. And then you've got another one here, which has got embossed stripes. This is the lid for the Helter Skelter and there's different ways of decorating that. You can do some layers in different colors, which is what has been done on the packaging here or you can use this pretty floral element. You've also got really useful dies. So you've got like a ship's wheel and an anchor. So there is just a plethora of goodies to play with in this kit. And as you can see on the acetate, it is packed full. I did struggle to get everything back on to here because it's, it's packed and, you know, every sort of inch of space was used so let's dive into the tutorial to make the helter skelter shall we 
Okay, so the first thing to note is that obviously this fantastically versatile die set enables you to make a helter skelter, a lighthouse and a windmill. Now the actual base or the, the two halves are the same for all three makes and then there's the tops are all different and there's clear instructions for how to make each of the tops. So this tutorial will show you how to make the Helter Skelter but I'll also give you some tips on the other two makes as well and as you saw just now there's also some bonus projects. So whatever of the three that you're choosing to make you're going to need the small hexagon, six of the smaller dies for the top half of the base and six of the bottom half. Now because it's got an even number of sides you can alternate colours if you want to so you're not going to end up with two purples next to each other for example. You also need to cut out two of this probably the largest die with all the folds here and they actually fit together to form one hexagon so I'll show you how to construct that the sides so the order that I'm going to go through this tutorial is the order that is shown in the instructions because that's going to make most sense to you if you're watching my tutorial you can follow along with me and then have the instructions next to you and we'll both be um, in sync. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is to decide on your colour palette. So it's quite handy to have all of the three makes depicted on the front because what I did for example is look at the Helter Skelter and say okay what, what colours do I want? and therefore how many different packs of cardstock do I need and then I also picked a few extra as well which I always think is good to do because if you change your mind at any point you've always got some extra card that you know will match with your colour palette. So after you've done that you need to cut the required number of pieces. So as I said six of the bottom tier, six of the top tier, one of the box base two of the trays and only for the healthy skelter is the tray top which is this die which is nested around the thick hexagon with the little tabs on the inside so that is to put on top of there but you don't need that for the other two because the other two sort of fit inside the base there but with the healthy skelter they fit on top so the first thing to do so these these are slightly smaller that's our top tier so we'll move that to one side and the first thing we need to do is to go around and adhere the bottom tier onto the base so what we need to do first in the instructions is to go around and stick the bottom tier panels to the small hexagon. So what we're going to want to do, obviously as crafters you all know how to glue things but if you're newer to constructing 3D makes what you really want to ensure is that the fold line is as close as possible to the edge of what you're adhering it to. It's really handy if you've got a fine nibbed glue bottle. I can't recommend the fine tipped nozzle for the Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive enough. I honestly genuinely think it's absolutely fantastic because the bottle itself does have quite a fine nib but if you compare it to this you get you can get teeny tiny little, little lines which is really handy when you're gluing tiny little elements. So you need to ensure that you glue the correct tab. So I've accidentally just put glue on the top tab uh, which is fine because I'll remove that later with a glue eraser and um, it 
dries clear anyway but basically it tapers out as does the top tier so you need to adhere glue to the bottom tab which is fatter and is also at the wider end of the panel I do love it when these little things happen because it helps me to help you and it also as people have told me in the past helps you to realize that it's okay to make little boo-boos like that because even professional semi-professional would i class myself as a professional cracker i don't know professional hobbyist definitely so basically that's what you want so it's a tiered extremely close to the edge i don't think we can get it any closer and then once you're confident that it's adhered as well as it can be you give it a nice burnish and if you if you're in the market for a burnisher this is the precision glide for, uh, bone fold out from tonic studios and it is excellent it's much better than those plasticky ones so if you've got a spare bit of cash or when you do have i would highly recommend that you add one of these to your order so basically the instructions say to go around and glue all of the tiers on before you actually adhere the side panels so obviously we're going to do it in colour order I'll just do this one so that you can see how they line up together so again I find it's good to sort of place it down where I think it'll be and then hold it up like this and give it a little wiggle and then even though we're not gluing this yet just offer it up so that I can tell if it looks okay and it does so I'm happy to give that a burnish now there we go I think these two colours look really nice together the fuchsia pink and the mauve purple I will list everything all the colours that I've used the colours of the craft perfect and the things that I mention I'll link them all in the description box and there will be affiliate links as well so if you find value in this video if you enjoy it and you think yeah this has actually helped me and you want to support me for free then um, if you purchase through my affiliate links then I get a small commission, you've done a good deed and everyone's a winner. So as we go through this tutorial, I will be giving you little top tips and things to make it easier for you to assemble the project. Obviously the design of this make is that you remove the top tier from the bottom tier. Therefore, by adhering the glue tabs to the top of the base panel, you'll be able to see the glue tabs. So you could have either adhered them to the bottom or you can simply cut another little hexagon and stick that on there. So that's what I am going to do. And this is purely to make it look pretty on the inside if you are in a rush or you're not too bothered then this step is not included in the instruction in the official instruction so you don't have to do it at all but I just think it's nice to make things look as neat as possible so the next step is to adhere the large side panel and the little tab as well so it does have score lines in it and i have scored it i think in order to get it neat it sort of does a little bit and that might be to make it slightly narrower so that the top part goes onto it so if we start here remember if you're using the nouveau deluxe adhesive which i always rave about it's what i personally always use it's yes it's five i think it's 5.49 a bottle but it's frequently on offer and if you're a tonic craft kit subscriber then you'll know that we often get them for free in the kits and once you've tried it it's one of those things you realize how good it is and that you do actually need it in your life so 
I do the teeny tiny little flap. And I think it's easier to glue the long tab and then the short tab. So you can just focus on one thing at a time. And again, just make sure that you're gluing the edge of the one panel to the edge of the folded glue tab line to keep it nice and neat. And when that has been when you're happy that that's been done then you can give it a burnish the next step after this is to construct the top tier which is done in the exact same way except there's no base to adhere it to so you just attach all of the side tabs to each other so you've got a long line of them and then you attach the last one together so it's it's fully formed so again I'm gonna do the rest of these off camera now I've shown you how to do three of them so here is the completed bottom tier so super simple to assemble guys seriously the only difference with adhering the top tier is obviously we don't adhere it to a base. As I said, we just adhere them to each other and end up with a long line and then attach the last one. But it does say in the instructions to only glue this main tab initially, the long one, and then adhere the smaller tabs after so just wanted to point that out because i was going to do this all off camera because obviously they've said that for a reason get a nice long line of them and then go around and adhere the top tabs and then the bottom tabs so i'll just do that off camera and then i'll come back and show you how we assemble our base okay so now we have the top and the bottom constructed it fits nice and snugly onto the bottom tier and you might just be able to see that at the top and the bottom the way that the glue tabs are constructed is that they taper in slightly and I think that enables it to sort of stay on there without slipping down too far so it goes on nice and snugly so if we put that to one side for a second the next thing we need to do is to glue our two hexagon bases together after we've made sure that we've folded and burnished all of these score lines and this bottom one here the tapered one that is where you're going to apply the glue so that's going to fold over and attach to the bottom but first of all we need to attach them to each other so I'm just going to check from all angles that that's lined up properly using a precision glide folder bone folder whatever you want to call it enables the paper fibers to embed with the aid of the glue better so that's why it's really good and important in construction and in card making when we're adding our mats and layers it just helps everything to embed properly so it's now all one piece so it doesn't really matter where we start so i'm going to start here so with this these little bits need to be tucked in they don't have to be glued these little what look like glue tabs they don't have to be glued it doesn't say that in the instructions it just says to apply it here it does tell you to apply it somewhere else but i can't quite figure out from the diagram where that is but i after testing it out i have come up with where I think it would be handy to have a bit of glue. So I'll share that with you. So first of all, we just need to make sure 
that this adheres. Now obviously we're not going to be able to get our burnishing tool in there but we can get a pokey tool in there so I think it's just a good idea to get in with a pokey tool and you know do a bit of burnishing the best that we can. We've folded and burnished all of these score lines and the glue tab so we just need to ensure that it does actually stick and it wasn't wanting to stick just by pressing it down. There we go. Okay, so then before we do the next one, I'll show you what I mean about where I think it's a good idea to apply some glue. So once this is adhered, it's going to be nice and flush like that. So I think it would be a good idea to put a tiny little bit of glue just on the corner there. That's my interpretation because I can't work out from the diagram the other place other than here that it's telling you to. So I would just say a tiny, tiny little bit of glue there. We just need to make sure that these are tucked in. So I'm going to hold those together. Oh, yeah, pulling it away. So you just need to take your time with this. And with the Helter Skelter, we add the hexagon once we've finished this on top of here. But with the other two makes, the body of the make fits inside here so before I, ad I adhere that I'll put this inside there so that you can see how that works because the video would be too long if I showed you all three construction methods and if you're anything like me you'll probably be watching other design team members as well as myself their videos because you get maximum inspiration from the most videos that you watch and also the tonic official tutorial as well basically what i'm trying to say is that amongst the in-house crafter team and the design team i'm sure there will be examples of how to make all of the three projects that you can make with this versatile kit so i'm going to Go ahead now and adhere these other three and then be back in a moment once that's done and then we can start assembling the Helter Skelter elements. And here we go, the completed base. Just to mention when you're adhering the very last one, the little pointy outy bit there that we were adding glue to, you just need to bend it down slightly and push it under that first element that we glued down. So if this were a windmill or a lighthouse then our tower would fit in there really quite comfortably but as it's a helter skelter we do it differently and we have a lovely different coloured hexagon on there. I think for extra sturdiness I'm actually going to add a hexagon to the top and the bottom to be honest. So you'll get to see the lovely yellow sides. Obviously you won't see the bottom but it'll just be a bit more sturdy because I am going to just go around and add a little bit more glue into certain places. Some bits have been awkward so I'll I'll add some extra bits of glue but the hexagon fit perfectly on the bottom and as we saw the tower fit perfectly into there it's just that when covering it with the hexagon even just being a millimetre out here and there affects whether you can see the yellow underneath the pink so I'm just trying to get it lined up as well as I possibly can so that it looks nice and neat but also by going around and adding bits of extra glue anyway we're just adding extra strength and stability to it so things like this just taking a few extra moments just to add extra bits of glue here and there in construction are perfectly normal things that 
need to be done occasionally so if you're finding that you need to do that don't worry about it at all so i'm just going to fuss with this a little bit more add the hexagons and then i will come back and we will assemble the helter skelter element okay so the base is now completed and it feels quite secure and the next step is you need to have cut the two dies that look like this so these are the the base that the actual helter skelter elements will fit onto i've decided to do them in yellow and i've just been looking at how to position them so obviously it's two parts and they wrap around the helter skelter completely so they do so in such a manner that they go all the way from the top to the bottom so this is the bottom one as you can see it goes directly to the bottom so it's got all these uh, score lines in so you just sort of fold those and then that one goes up there a little bit and then this one it starts off it's the flat bit and that starts off here and wraps around to the bottom of the panel to the right if that makes sense so like this so it wraps around and then it comes to a stop there so then we need to glue that and then ensure that the other one lines up in the same place <laughs> very difficult i'm trying to i'm trying to explain it to you b before gluing it but it's going to be easier just to glue it if we apply glue all the way along and i'm going to start on the purple bit so we align that with the top of one of the sections and then it just wants to follow its own little path as you can see it just sort of goes around so it's the top bit that we're most bothered about and then this bottom bit getting that lined up as well there we go so that's nice nice and lined up there that's nice and lined up there the instructions recommend that whatever of the three designs that you're constructing that you decorate as you go along and i think that's more so for the other two because they have brickwork and windows etc but i did make a little door for this because there's a door element and it's adorable and i figured someone might need to get into the helter skelter to do something and then i also decided that i did want to decorate it because there's so many gorgeous decorative elements but i thought why should my little helter skelter not have any decorative pieces on so i used there's two dies that i used and um, there's one that creates these gorgeous little foliage elements and there's one which makes a large flower well not that that's particularly large and a small flower so i'm actually going to decorate my helter skelter with flowers and foliage so um slightly unorthodox i don't know i don't care or you know it's craft it can be whatever we want it to be so if i pop this back on now then we can see where this one needs to start so that one needs to start there so that it can finish here see so i'm going to hold this in place take that off okay so this lines up with the score line there yeah looks seamless then gorgeous Okie dokie, so let's try doing it one bit at a time. Let's 
see if that makes any difference. I think it's easier just to put glue on the whole thing because it wants to wrap around where it needs to go because of the score lines. Another great thing about the Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive is that it dries clear so if you do have excess glue obviously try and remove as much as you can but it doesn't matter too much because you won't see it once the final result has been completed. Okay so now our Helter Skelter can really start to take shape. So you will have cut out these little shapes that make the actual helter skelter slide there are six of them that have little indentations in them from A to F and it doesn't explicitly say in the instructions that you need to adhere the bottom and top portions or the bottom portion at least to the base before you start assembling the slide but you do and I found that out because I started sticking the bottom one on and then realised from the picture that the first or the last slide goes onto the tray which is why the Helter Skelter has a tray like that and it doesn't go inside it it's because that's where the end of the slide will be. So they're, they're varying lengths, um, but they do all have clearly the numbers indent, the letters, should I say, indented into them. But the first one that we'll be attaching has actually got a couple of extra little glue tabs on them. So you need to make sure that you have fully scored and burnished all of your glue tabs. This one will glue onto there and this one you can glue it on top but I think if you glue it underneath it will just look neater. So we glue that underneath and then that will be hidden because it gets stuck on to the base of the Helter Skelter. So it's a little bit fiddly this bit. I haven't got particularly large hands but it is a little bit fiddly so just take your time. But while you're holding that one you can just add a little bit of glue to this one here. But the others don't have this. You just attach them to each other by the glue tab at the end of each one. But I say this one gets attached to the base of the Helter Skelter as well as the side. So just do a dry run. What I did was I put glue on to the base and then positioned it. It's not positioned centrally because if it's positioned centrally this overhangs a little bit so I wanted it to be flush with the edge so I, I wanted to just mention that because it doesn't matter if it's slightly off centre to look at but in terms of constructing it it's, it's a lot easier and it looks better if it's flush with the edge. So apologies if you can hear any noise from outside it is bank holiday kids are off school etc so and also another thing to mention is that there are only six of these so they don't wrap around completely so they only there's three on each on the one side and bearing in mind the six sides so you don't see the th there's none on the back so this one does have a clear back and well they all will have a clear back and front um, or sides at least but the these are purely decorative and just on the one side so this should be ready to adhere now so so this is the only one 
that actually you adhere the bottom and the side in all the other ones you'll just be doing adhering it here to the side of the helter skelter and then to its neighbour using the glue tab so oh okay so it didn't need to have glue on there <laughs> oh you get so much more with my videos don't you you get you get bloopers you get oh my gosh did she really do that you get everything watching my videos <laughs> if you are finding value and uh, enjoying this video and my bloopers please consider hitting the like button at this point uh, and leave me a comment at the end telling me if you enjoy watching my bloopers <laughs> okay so there we go so that is adhered and these yellow lines are purely guidelines for us to adhere the slide so I've attached it to the base here it doesn't need glue on the underside and it does just need glue on that glue tab so whilst it's still got some wiggle room left in it I'm going to check yep this is number B number B this is letter B <laughs> oh Terry what are we like I think it's one of those days yep that will fit nicely there so that was just checking so now i can go ahead and burnish this a little bit okay so i'm going to turn it over a little bit i think it is best to add glue to both of the glue tabs at this point So that's the first two this one is a bit higher if you look closely but only if you look from down there or up there if you just look at it side on you can't tell but it's all in line so then it's much easier to attach the other pieces because you adhere just the one flap to the yellow strip and the little glue tab there <clears throat> so I say this is the last one for the bottom section and then there will be three for the top section as well so there we go so now I need to put this back on so that I can figure out the next bit so that's lined up there so it's going to be these three so it's A, B, C so I need D which will be here so as you can see the back won't have anything on it E yep yeah. just check my positioning yep yeah. it is fun though that this helter skelter is very fun looking so i'm just going to assemble these other two pieces just as i've done there and then i'm going to come back and show you how to construct the roof and then also decorate my pretty helter skelter so see you back in a mo okay so here we go it's all coming together we've got our helter skelter complete with slide on one side and just yellow decoration on the back obviously you saw me struggle a little bit with adhering the 
slide so don't worry if you do also ultimately it doesn't matter if you don't get things perfectly lined up because it'll look absolutely fine once it's all stuck together anyway so the next step is to construct the roof panel and the little viewing panel so you will have cut out three of these dies and then either picked a circular window or a triangular window and then you'll have cut three of these panels that have these little glue tabs on and a flag so there's two flags obviously because they need to be glued together and uh, there's different ways of decorating this pretty roof which just screams flower at me until it's actually glued down you can do it as per the packaging so there's that larger die and then a smaller die or you can do what I've done where I've used the larger die as a backing panel and then this decorative die over the top so firstly you put the flag which has been glued other everywhere other than this bit so slide it through there to the point where the score line is and then bend bend it so that the score lines go back like that and then pop a bead of glue on each side we put way too much glue on there i'm gonna get it all out of my fingers but that's okay so we'll have a nice yellow flag on top of our helter skelter which is going to be further decorated with foliage So after we have adhered the flag in place and made sure it's not wonky, we can then glue our other sections onto each other. So we need to make sure that they are in colour order if you've done what I have done. So I'll glue this one onto there and then I can pick that up Oops. and then this one will get glued onto the final one so it looks like a flower hence the inspiration for the card because if you bend the petals back that way well they're not petals but if you bend it back that way it totally looks like a flower and then next we adhere each of the petals to each other using the glue tab like that so I'm just going to give it a little burnish in the middle as soon as we've just adhered three pieces of card together. I do really like this pretty design. It is gorgeous, especially in a speciality cardstock like glitter or mirror. It's so pretty. This bit's really quite easy. So now I've done these three, I will assemble the others off camera and also I'm going to stick these panels together off camera because it's literally just gluing those glue tabs together. And then I'll come back and show you how this fits on to there okay so now we have the little viewing deck and these rounded glue tabs and then the very top 
of the Helter Skelter. So it's going to fit in there like that. And if we look at it from the other way up, you can see that there's that these rounded glue tabs sort of correspond to the petal like things. So we need to adhere them so that this sits nicely inside there and this also fits nicely on top of the top tier so this is the top top tier of the uh, the helter skelter it slots on really nicely there but it'll be easier to construct if we do it this way i think so i'm not sure whether it's going to be easier to add glue on one tab or on all of them or what so we're going to go for all of them and then if we find that it's easier to add it to one or two then we just add more glue afterwards because it's fine it's all hidden under here we just need to make sure that it looks pretty from the outside and that it's even so ideally we don't want any of these corner bits poking out yeah so i do think this was the best way to do it i think it's easier to to stick a couple down at a time but having the glue already on there makes it easier there we go yeah looks pretty even you can't get it in any further because of the roundedness of the top the way it tapers so yeah it the petal shapes cover a little bit of the window but not loads of the window so I'm just sort of try and make sure that it's even that's that's the most important thing that it's even and that it's stuck down let's pop this on top now okay so how cute is that absolutely adorable and really quite substantial as well really nice size you can get loads of treats in there or a lovely little gift or several it is a really nice size actually that would look really really lovely in a children's bedroom on a shelf so i'm going to decorate this with my little flowers and foliage i'm going to make my two other bonus projects and also give you a bit of information about how i've made the bonus project so not another two tutorials just a bit of information that i think will help you to recreate the fairy house basically i'll just explain how i have made that so i will see you back in a moment with all three completed makes okay my crafty friend so here we go the three completed makes so we have the gorgeous helter skelter which i have decorated up it's a cute little door there lots of little cute elements with the foliage and the flowers this is a nice blingy bright summery birthday card that i have made because as i said as soon as i saw the top of the helter skelter i thought that it looked like a flower so to make that all i did was cut three of these elements and then just snipped off the glue tabs from each end and then stuck them together i used a hexagonal die from the kit and cut some foliage in some glitter quasi lake glitter cardstock and i used a lovely happy birthday sentiment from tonic studios and then i really wanted to make a fairy house 
again because to me this looks like a floral element and because of the many many detailed stamps that we get in the kit i really wanted to use like the brickwork and the the other shaped window and things like that so to make this all i did was this part is the top portion here so i made the top portion and then that for the bottom whereas here you have the glue tabs that attach to each other like that what I did was I cut off the actual glue tabs and then folded these score lines down and stuck them together so because it's not a circle it was possible to fold these down and stick them without leaving it looking all wonky and I then stuck that onto the onto a die cut, a hexagonal die cut using the base die for this. And that wasn't big enough for my liking. So I thought, actually, I'll make a base for it to sit in. So I've made a base from um, the green cardstock and just added some pencil detail for some grass and some little stones here so this is like the front of the fairy house and then I've used foliage and the different flowers this is another little die which cuts this little shape and that one so it sort of looks like a tulip when you add them both together so from the front I've got it having the, the left and the right sides looking quite similar but again I've just gone round and added foliage and flowers and I've used three of these windows and then for the top again the this bit is the same as that so it's the same way to construct it I just used a different insert so the one on this is a rounded window and then this one's a pointy window this pink bit here is the top that you make for the windmill so that is really simple to make it's very similar to this but the ends are a different shape so you basically cut that three times the same as that and then glue the tabs together but the, I chose that because the top is flat and it's pretty much the perfect size to put this on uh, then I decided to add some vellum onto the back here this is the vintage white vellum and I've put a battery operated tea light in here which is one of the ones that flickers and I am so super happy with this because look what happens it might not be very dramatic because obviously it's daylight but in real life you can see the light flickering so it's like the little fairies are home and they've got their lights on and it just looks super cute if you're a big kid like me and you've got and you like ambient lighting and lamps and things like that you could sort of have that on like you would a flickering candle but this would be so lovely for a little child that was old enough to operate a battery operated candle obviously not a real tea light one of the faux ones just to have a little bit of light there and I am just in love with this so whilst it's not a full tutorial it's it's very simple to make it's basically the same as making this except you're just making the top part and you're using the you're creating the lid for the windmill so the only thing I haven't shown you in this is how to construct the lighthouse and 
with the lighthouse you just again pretty much everything is the same because obviously we use the same top and bottom for all three makes you just use some different elements to make the gallery this bit and you use a taller side panel than you do for the other two and it, there's bigger windows for it and again with the mechanism for the windmill but the instructions are super clear the only thing i will say is that i noted for the top of this it tells you to cut two of the roof dies but it's three it's three the same as the helter skelter but it's quite obvious because if you only cut two there'd be a there'd be a gap that was just big enough for another die cut so that's just a little typo in the instructions so there we go um i really hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial and found it valuable and enjoyed seeing my creations i'm now going to package these up and send them off to tonic and then you'll be seeing them at the launch i'll also obviously once the launch has happened share pictures on social media as well some close-up photos so if you check out my social media i'll, I'll get some like really close-up photos of uh, the detailed element so yeah i do have other socials as well as youtube i've got instagram and facebook so if you don't follow me on those it'd be great to see you on those platforms as well if you're on there so just one last thing if you have found value in this video and you've picked up some tips and you like my makes please leave me any questions or comments or anything that you like and also it really really helps youtube to know that people are enjoying my videos if you like them and share them and comment on them so if you could remember to give a like then that really helps so thank you very much and again if you are going to purchase this set or if you're going to purchase any goodies any cardstock or you need to stock up on glue i'd really appreciate it if you shop through my affiliate link so i get a little bit of commission so that's all from me today and i'll see you really soon with some more crafty goodness bye for now